Candida. It is an epidemic. Did you know that almost 40% of the patients that I see in practice at Center Spring MD have Candida? Do you even know what Candida is? Well, in this video, we are gonna break down how to treat Candida naturally using food. Now, if you don't know what Candida is, you may wanna check out one of my videos where I break down Candida and talk a little bit about what it may be doing for your body. But here's the cliff note version. Candida is a yeast, it lives in our gut, causes constipation, bloating, so many different symptoms, but it's affecting men, women, and children, and all showing up in different ways. In men, it's crashing their testosterone, causing a lot of digestive issues. In women, it's the hormonal component. And in children, it's the cognitive and brain component that I keep seeing over and over again. Bottom line, candida is something we need to take seriously. That yeast is overgrowing because there is so much sugar in our diet, so many refined carbohydrates, so many processed foods, that now it's an epidemic that I have to deal with every single day in practice. Now, oftentimes I'll send patients out on a candida protocol, right? But if they're not changing their diets, they see very little movement. We've got to treat food as medicine. So what we wanna do today is break down the foods that don't work, especially if you have candida or foods that worsen candida, and the ones you may wanna add a little bit more to. All right, so let's talk about it. Foods that make candida worse, make that yeast overgrow and create havoc throughout the entire body. All right, we're gonna start with the super obvious one. So one of the ones that I talk about all the time is just purely sugar. And you can get sugar in so many forms, right? You can get them in sweets and desserts and all of those things, but people don't realize that sugar, even in fruit juices, your sodas, those will worsen candida. So you wanna get into the habit of turning the label around, pulling it up, 23 grams of sugar, really guys, per serving? Let's look at a Coke. On the other hand, a Coke is 65 grams of sugar in this thing. Do you know what the requirement is to keep your sugars low and to keep candida at bay? Under 25 grams a day. We've already lost it if we've had a serving of this or have had a Coke that day. All right, moving on from that, so many of you guys love your alcohol, you like a good time, and you like your wine in particular, and many of you come into me and you're doing a glass of wine every night, maybe two, some of you are doing even more than that, or you're more of the beer liquor type person. Regardless, everyone asks me, what is the best type of liquor to drink? It doesn't matter. When we're talking candida, it all converts to sugar and it worsens the yeast in your gut. That's what I see in the men, quite honestly. They're drinking, they've been drinking for a long time, no matter what they're drinking, and ultimately we see more candida in the gut crashes their testosterone levels, which then in turn impacts their mood, their libido, and their sense of self, and so much more. So we really wanna get the alcohol under control. If you have severe candida, it needs to go out the door. If you have mild to moderate candida, you could do a drink here and a drink there, but if you're crossing over that three to four drinks per week, you're gonna have candida, I guarantee you, and it's not gonna go away no matter how much we do. All right, what about all the canned foods? Have you guys thought about that? Everyone thinks vegetables are good, fruits are good, but when they're canned, not so much. Why? We've lost the nutrients, we're increasing again sort of the refined component of this stuff, so it worsens the yeast in the gut, and canning in general, and the process of canning, increases yeast and candida. So take those away, replace them with whole fruits, whole vegetables, things that work with your body, not against your body, please. All right, another big category I haven't even yet mentioned yet is dairy. You know, I worked in an ice cream store, I probably told you guys that story, all throughout high school and into college, and was my unhealthiest during those times. I had severe acne. I was probably about a solid 10 to 15 pounds heavier, but that's because I was tasting ice cream constantly, right? Sampling, making sure it was fresh is what we used to say. But anyhow, all of that dairy, all of that sugar made my candida worse. I didn't even know what that was at that time, but I continue to see that today. It's not just ice cream. It's even things we think are healthy, like yogurt. When you add a bunch of sugar, let's read the label. 20 grams of sugar in this yogurt. Not gonna work, guys. It's going to make candida worse. Plain yogurt is not bad, by the way, when we're thinking about dairy. Plain yogurt is actually okay. It has lots of those probiotics in it that help to balance yeast in the gut. But the minute you start adding a lot of flavorings and all this other junk to it, it turns into something that worsens candida, worsens our sort of overall insulin resistance as well. And not to segue, but candida and insulin resistance are highly tied together. The more yeast you have in the gut, 
the higher your circulating blood sugar levels are, the higher your insulin is, more inflammation. Lots of videos on that. Check out another video where we talk about that and describe that phenomenon right here. But all of it is connected and connected to your overall health. All right, we got a couple more here. I wanna make sure I hit corn and refined corn and processed corn, corn syrup. It's in so many different products here in the US. And I really believe it's making us sick. We've gotta figure out a way how to get this out. So corn chips, you know, all your corn cereals, you know, all the corn in your diet. You wanna take a hard look at that as well if you've got candida and bring it down. And some of you are probably sweating right now and, and having maybe a few palpitations that are like, she's hitting every group I eat. I don't want you to panic. This is not a reason to panic. This is really to take a hard inventory at your diet and think about maybe what needs to go. Maybe you're having three glasses of juice a day or maybe everything you eat is corn and that needs to go, but figure out where to begin, target one of these groups and start there and start to eliminate it so we can keep candida low. All right, refined breads, white flour, white pasta. These are things that worsen candida as well as do potatoes. So these are the bad guys and I feel like I've been kind of negative. So let's move on to the good guys. All right, let's switch gears here. There are foods that actually help you to beat candida and they work. I have so many testimonials about this. Let's start with whole foods again. So grapefruit in all its forms beets yeast. It helps to keep yeast at a minimum. And we know a whole grapefruit having one a day, or even things like grapefruit extract, grapefruit juice, grapefruit seed oil, all of these things are helpful in lowering candida. We know that lemon is very helpful too. It changes the pH. We're trying to balance the microbiome. That's all those little bugs living in your belly and trying to balance all those systems that we need to stay healthy and not have inflammation. All right, kefir and even the sauerkraut. Why in the world do I like these? Well, they're fermented, meaning they have a lot of good, healthy bacteria. Again, it's all a population control, right? The more good guys you put into the mix, then you lower the bad guys, everybody's happy. But the minute you allow the bad guys to overgrow, hence candida, that's when the body starts to rebel. So these are good guys. Have some of this, maybe four ounces, three or four times a week. It helps to really populate all the good stuff in the gut, keeping candida at bay. And another category that we don't talk about very much are fats. And I, I feel like I'm always trying to explain this to patients, that if we don't have enough healthy fat, and your belly, your gut's not absorbing fat very well, then we know that there's going to be more candida. Good fats sort of stabilize the gut microbiome. They keep everybody living in harmony. So MCT oil, right? Taking maybe a tablespoon of that every day, mix, mixing that into your coffee or your smoothie, taking just a quarter teaspoon, you don't need a lot of this, but a quarter teaspoon of coconut oil or even ghee that helps to stabilize the gut. It contains something, okay, big word time here. It contains something called beautiful butyrate and butyrate is really a chemical that helps to balance out all the gut bacteria and keep candida at bay. So these are some of the foods, cherries as well. All of these are foods that you can bring into the diet and really help to minimize candida. And in addition to what we've got here that is very candida targeted, remember, you know, eating lean proteins, lots of greens, a generally healthy diet without a lot of processed foods, high sugar foods is going to be the way to go when you're trying to tackle candida with food. Here's what I don't want you to do, and I've even stopped to hand it out. I used to have this great handout in practice about a candida diet. That thing is pretty miserable. It takes everything out. It takes out every sauce, every vinegar, every spice. Don't panic, don't do all that stuff. Focus on these kind of main target trigger foods for candida. Work on keeping these out of your diet and really substitute them with some of the healthier foods, whole foods, some of the things we've talked about. And I promise you will be able to get your candida under control. All right, food is medicine. I don't want you guys to get sidetracked from that. There are other things that help candida too, as we've mentioned before. But again, this is a conversation we'll continue to have. And I have videos about candida constantly, check them out. And I post new videos every week. Don't forget to like and subscribe and join my superwoman circle so that we can keep each other motivated as we navigate all these different hormonal challenges and really trying to understand how our gut, our hormones, our food, our lifestyle is all connected.